All right, Shalom, Shalom, let's break it up. Shalom, I'm your brother Kuna. Start off by giving our praise to you. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakadadash. This camp is uh, right before the um, Passover. Isn't it crazy how fast, like, we already got back to the Passover? It came up out of nowhere. Like, we knew it was coming, but it's just surprising how fast it lasts. Yes. I still remember last year's Passover. I still got pictures of last year's Passover. So it's been damn near a whole year that quick. You know what I mean? So. This camp ain't gonna be too long, you know. We just going in, like, just to explain some things from the Passover. I had a brother inbox me, he wanted some details from the Passover. So, this is what we always do, like, during this time. We just break down pretty much the Passover. And, you know, um, you just gotta remember, like, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. You're not gonna be able to keep it perfect. You're not gonna be able to keep it like our ancestors did in Egypt. You know what I mean? So, we're just rehearsing the righteous acts. So, you just keep it to the best of your abilities. You know what I mean? And really, it's just a day that's really about the Lord. Just remembering, you know, what our Lord did for us when he took us out of Egypt. And then to know prophecy that our Lord going to do it again. But he's going to take us out of America. That Egypt, compared to what America is today, Egypt probably was like one city. You see what I'm saying? Like, maybe like a Chicago city. But uh, Mystery Babylon, America is so much bigger. So you got to think of the deliverance that we're going to get from this place. Like, we not going to go out on foot this time. Now, this time, we going to go out on chariots because this place is so huge and our people are scattered really throughout the whole world. But if you just talk about Mystery Babylon, our people are scattered throughout all these cities. So it's impossible for uh, us to come together and walk out, like walk to Mexico or something like that. So this deliverance is going to be by the chariots. So this is great because it reminds us that the Lord did save us out of somewhere. So when you start getting low on faith, doing this time around the Passover, this always give you a boost because you remember like, no, the Lord did. I know sometimes it's tarrying. It seems like it's taking a long time, um, our human standards, right? But then you remember like, no, our Lord did save us out of Egypt. So if he said he's going to take us out of Mystery Babylon to save us, then that's what's going to happen. So we just going to break down pretty much the Passover in, um, in the book of Exodus. This is Exodus 12 at the top. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you, un, unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Yeah. Verse 3. So so the first month is not uh, January in the middle of winter. We know that's the first month is like right now, you know. Um, all the greenery is been about to start popping back up. The trees are about to start growing leaves and stuff like that. Right. And it speaks on, um, this was around the time that, um, if I'm not mistaken, around this, like around this time was when Yahawashai was uh, born. Yeah. Not at the end of the year when it was all uh, snowy and shit. Right. And definitely not no December 25th. That shit right. goes back to like worshiping Nimrod and everything. You gotta look up what you worship. Satanic. And the holidays you're following, you got to look up the background and the history of these holidays. Verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a horse. Right, so the I mean, for a house. So, so the Passover is for all Israel, Israelites, not the ones that you think is the elect, not the ones that's just in your world. Passover is for all Israelites, one third and two thirds. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, we, had, we had, um, you know, that don't mean that you got to sit down and keep the Passover with them like at your personal space. But we telling all Israel, you need to keep the Passover. If you're not, you need to repent. You know, you need to try to keep it. You need to do the uh, research to learn how to keep it correctly so you don't profane the uh, Passover because we just seen that happen. We just seen brothers do that, right? So, but you need to try to keep it. Yeah, and these are the holidays. These are the, the holidays for us as a people. Yeah. This is our culture, the high holy days. Yeah. This is what we're supposed to be celebrating. And um, this is a part. Yeah, kind. Uh, verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for your lamb. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Right, so this where, um, uh, what's that, Judges 5, I believe, where it says rehearsing the righteous act. This is where this comes in there. Now, we know we in the land of our captivity. We're not going to go, we're not going to get a lamb, an unblemished, and slaughter it ourselves 
and stuff like that. So most brothers, you just go down to the store, you get you some lamb. You know, you pray over it. When you keeping the Passover, you know, you rehearsing the righteous acts. Verse 6, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Right, so this is, would be the 14th day of the month because uh, coming sundown because you had the first day, which was the new moon. Right, which um, I forget the exact day. Just go 14 days back from this day. And that was the first day, the new moon. Right, so from the new moon, you got the 14th day, 14th day, which is going, it's going to be a full moon that's going to be in the sky. And now you have the Passover. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Right, so you got to understand that the Passover is the first day. The next seven days is the Feast of Unleavened and Bread. It's two different things. Because some people just call the whole thing the Passover. Passover is the first day, and the last day is a Sabbath day anyway. So really, what brothers do, because we is in captivity, man, we rehearse the righteous that what brothers do is, you know, they keep the Passover to the best of their ability for the first day, and then brothers got to go back to work, got to go back to the um, plantation and everything. So then Monday and, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, you will go back, but you just won't eat anything with leaven in it. If you got a home to yourself, you won't bring anything in your home with leaven in it. Um, for that first day, which is like yeast, pretty much. You know what I mean? And then the last day, you will keep the Sabbath, and then there you go. You did it to the best of your abilities. Or you're going to do it perfectly, or you're not know what no man is. If a man tell you he's doing it perfectly, he's a liar. You see what I'm saying? Don't, you got to realize we're humans, and we don't do anything perfectly. Uh, verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts on and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it so there's been different breakdowns about that me i say if you want to do that you can do it if you don't if you don't if you can't do it because you like some brothers live at apartments they can't do that they can't go out and put blood on the outside of their apartments you see what i'm saying so you just doing it to the best of your ability don't be over righteous you know pray to the lord and we do have grace the lord is the missing key when the lord comes back which we're going to get into the lord and the things that he went through for us and on uh, the book of Matthews, right? But he's the missing key. In the kingdom, we're gonna be perfect. You're not gonna be perfect right now. So, so you ain't. So brothers don't really do that. Me, I, I do. I just take the blood like out the package and I strike like my front door with it. You know what I mean? But you can do it if you want to, if you can. And then if you if you can't, then you can't. It just is what it is. Verse eight. And they shall eat it. <clears throat> so like, and they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it right so you gotta have your unleavened bread you get your corn tortillas right um you're gonna get your bitter herbs like i was like harsh reddish it's a couple different ones yeah. bitter herbs right yeah. now um parsley now the way you cook it like now we can play semantics man and say some brothers say um you have to like put it on the grill you don't some brothers say you fry it um i fry i fry before and i bake before some brothers say you bake the point is 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 you're heating it up with fire if you bake it you're still heating it up with fire bro like baking something is the same as grilling something you grill you got the fire underneath and it heats up the um the, the metal surface, yeah. right the surface and then and then that's and then you cook your food if you bake something you got fire in your oven and it heats up your oven and it still warm, it warms it, and then you got your your meat on a skillet and then that skillet is what cooks it so it, at the end of the day you you still putting it on metal when it's cooking if you put it on top of the stove you still putting the meat on a skillet right and turning the fire on underneath unless you got an elect electric stove you turn it on and what it's doing is it's heating up the metal and then the metal that the food is sitting on is cooking the food it's the same thing so you could bake it you could fry it man. well i ain't saying like dumping the oil and fry it that way but i'm saying like you could put it on a pan and cook it yeah. um verse nine eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water so don't be on your edomite shit leviticus 17 eat not the blood therein because the blood is the life of it so you don't i like mine a little bloody i like mine red don't do that shit man well done. Yeah. <clears throat> but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. Now you got brothers at home being over righteous and shit. They turning on they um they stole with the fire and then they putting one stick on one side, another stick, and then you know how you put it together and then they hanging the meat over the fire. Man, look, come on man. It's just saying cook it. Cook it well done. That's it. Verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it until the morning 
and that which remaineth of it until the morning he shall burn with fire. Right, so what we do is we, we eat everything because if you let it remain to the morning, then you're going to have to burn it with fire. Now you're going to be in your house trying to start a fire or in the backyard and you're trying to burn everything. Sure. So just eat it all. Don't get too much that you yeah, can't eat. Exactly. Cook what you know you can you can consume. Yep. You know? Not uh, all night. <laughs> verse 11. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So that's a big thing for brothers because brothers want to sit down and like they had a buffet. They want to eat slowly, drink a little wine. Right. They, 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 they want to be, you know, in a sweats, chilling. No, nah, you got to have some type of shoes on, man. Yeah. What did it just say? You got to have some type of shoes on. You got to pretty much be like, like, he, like you, you know, you might have your garment on, yeah. like you at camp. Because <laughs> the, the importance behind that is because the Israelites, our ancestors, us, right? During that time, they was getting ready because the Lord was going to deliver them out of Egypt. So they had to be ready. So they had to have everybody ready. Everybody, because imagine the Lord finna deliver you out, but now you still gotta get the kids dressed. You might get left. You ain't gonna make it. You gotta get the kids dressed. You gotta get dressed. So it was like, no, be ready. Have your have your garments on, have your shoes on, and then hurry up and eat it. Cause you know, brothers laying around eating it, and then y'all finna leave. You see what I'm saying? So imagine if the Lord come back right now. You wanna be ready, you got your shoes on, you ready and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, you, you already ate the Passover. Verse 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Okay, so two things with that, right? So just like, man, the Lord might do something. There's been a lot of, this place began plagued, man. So tonight, don't be surprised if you come out tomorrow, right? After the sun come up, right? And um and something being played or some some type of big some something big that happened, you know, because that could very well happen. Second off, the Lord said He's going to smite the firstborn sons of everything. So that kind of proves to you and show you it's about the male seed, man. Right. It's not about the female, bro. It's all about the male seed. That's what the Lord deals with the seed. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are all men. Right. Verse thirteen. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exactly. So same thing here. Now you got to remember it going back to the sea, right? So if an Egyptian, right, Mizraim has have a baby with an Israelite woman, that baby, what nationality is that baby? Uh, Egyptian sure. Right If an Egyptian man Let me put more context If an Egyptian man Have a baby With an Israelite woman What is that baby That baby is a Egyptian Right it's, it's no different Than like in England Or something You know you have An heir to the throne Right, right? So if An Israelite man Have a baby With a Moabite That baby is what We've seen this In the book of Ruth that baby is an Israelite thing. That's the whole thing behind the book of Ruth, man. Just read it. Right. Like King Solomon's children would be considered what? They will all be considered Israelites. But he had strange wives, right? Wives of other nations. Now, when he had a baby, let's just say King Solomon had a baby with a Moabite. Is that baby still an Israelite? Of course. Why is that baby an Israelite? Because the father's an Israelite. Uh, it's not a Moabite baby. You see? Right. So when you look at it like that, then there's really no such thing as... Right, I'm uh, as mixed, yep. right? If you if you're looking at it from a biblical standpoint, because you are what your father is. You are that little seed, that uh -huh. sperm that you you're that sperm. So wherever that sperm coming from, that's what you are. If I take a sunflower seed and I plant it in the forest, if I plant it in Egypt in the in the desert and get it to grow, it's still a sunflower seed. Why? It's still a sunflower that's gonna come out because it came from a sunflower seed. Right. Don't matter where I, I can plant it on the moon. If I get it to grow on the moon, guess what it's gonna right. be? A moon sunflower because it came from a sunflower seed. It's the same thing with a baby. If you come from an Israelite, it don't matter if it's planted in an Asian woman, a Edomite woman, a Ishmaelite woman. It's still an Israelite because it came from an Israelite seed. That's how it works. Man. It's okay. so simple. You can't plant a sunflower seed and expect a rose. In other words, exactly. 
you know. Um, verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for, for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout the, your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Forever. So we're going to keep the Passover. Even today while we're in captivity. Now, we lost a lot of things, man. Especially with the Hebrew and stuff. I know brothers say the prayer in Hebrew and everything. We done lost a lot of that, right? So you just keep it to the best of your abilities. So let's keep going. It's going to get to a feast time. Yeah, that's where, uh, that's where we at now. Um, verse 15. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leavening out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread for the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So the first day is coming today, sundown. So the first day is the Passover. So you got to take the leavening out your house, right? Uh -huh. To the best of your ability. Now, I know there's different ingredients and shit like that. You know, you just, what you know is what you know. If you know that there's certain ingredient, then you just do what you know, man. And just pray for mercy and, and that you know you got grace. Yeah, so how I do it is everything in my house that I know that blows up, I take it out. Yep. Yep. And, and, and then brothers may say, damn, I got to throw away all my shit. Well, you're supposed to prepare in advance. So when you know the Passover come up, don't buy as much groceries. Uh -huh. Or, you know, some brothers like um, put their stuff in their car that's parked outside. You know, if you got something that ain't gonna go bad, um, and then you'll bring it in after. You know, you got stuff that's like, because it's certain stuff that's not gonna go bad, but you really don't know. You kind of on the fence if you got leavening on it, so you just gonna take it out. Like, I'll be taking out shit that probably I don't need to take out. But I just don't really know. I'm looking at the ingredients, so sure. I just be like, shit, it, it don't need to be in the house. Let's just take it out just in case. You see what I'm saying? Some brothers put their shit in the storage. You know what I mean? And you just, you know, it is what it is, you know, try your best. Some sure. brothers live with their parents. They, they, their parents don't have living in the house because they're not a trip. So what you do is, what you do then is your house is your temple. You don't consume anything with living in. Right. Right. Verse 16. And in the first day, there shall be an holy convo convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be an holy convocation to you. Right, because the last day is the Sabbath anyway. So the first day, so this is supposed to be something holy. You ain't supposed to be, man, you know, you ain't supposed to be at the strip club on the Passover. Huh. Eating lamb. <laughs> you ain't supposed to be at the movie theaters watching the new Marvel movie with a plate of lamb. You know what I mean? This is supposed to be something holy, right? And we're going to get into the, the, the feeling and the spirit you're supposed to be in during the Passover. We're going to get into that next. Um, is that all of it? No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Yep, so you ain't supposed to be at the job on the Passover. Now the Feast of Unleavened and Bread, brothers, go back to work. We in captivity, but on the Passover, you got to take that day off. Man. Ain't no job that serious that you can't take one day off. But then it's on a Sunday afternoon anyway, so just take the day off. If they fire you, man, go get another job. Tell them, man, look. I gotta have this first day, at least this first day. That's it on that. Yeah. We're at the top. Or the pressure's going to be. Verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sins. He said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days of the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. I was shy, right? So now we finna get into the feeling, the type of spirit you're supposed to be in the Passover. Verse 3. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Sophias. Verse 4, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility Say and, <laughs> and kill him. Yahweh Shai. Yeah, that Jesus word, man. Yeah, that must eat you alive, huh? Yeah. All right, um, verse, verse 5. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the, among the people. So they even had respect. That's how important this day is. They was wicked and shit like that, plotting against our Lord. But even they was like, not on the feast day. You know what I mean? Not on these days. You see what I'm saying? So that's how important. That's, this is the day you're dealing with, man. 
this really like the most uh, part in one, man. You know, because it's a day not only to um to deal with um the Passover or what our Lord and Yahweh did saving us out of Egypt, but also a day remembering what our Lord went through. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so it's like it's from the from the beginning all the way to the end. Uh, verse six. Now when Yahweh was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having a alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at, at meat. Right, so so we'll we'll do that too, like during the Passover, like before we read the like the prayers in Hebrew and everything, like we'll pour just some ointment on your head and it tells you why, right? Um which he just read pretty much. Let me see. I want to jump to a different words. All right. I want to get to the point. Verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 17. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened, of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Yahweh Shai, saying unto him, Where wilt thou, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So, so this girl tried to argue on Facebook. I gotta bring it up. She said, "We not supposed to eat meat." You know, you you know, you get those vegans that be like, "You not supposed to eat meat," and then they try to like prove it in the Bible. Yeah. But then, but then we always say, "Well, the Lord was perfect." They said he was unblemished. He was the unblemished lamb. And we say, "Did he eat meat?" And then she gonna try to say, "Well, it did say that he eat meat." So let's see if it says, "Did he eat of the Passover?" Did he eat the meat? Verse eighteen. And he said, go into the city up to such a man and say unto him, the master, <clears throat> the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. So that right there. So if he didn't eat the lamb, that means he didn't keep the Passover. Really. So that's proven right there. Yeah, he did eat meat. Right. So we can eat meat. But let's keep going. It's going to prove it even more. And verse 19. And the disciples did as Yahweh Shai had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. I just seen a brother too who had posted. You know what I'm talking about. He had posted a little um, thing on uh, um, Facebook, and it said, "Stop eating meat. It's killing you." Yeah, go out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, bro. Look. So it says they made ready the Passover. The Passover is the lamb. Right. Let's keep going. Verse 20. Now, when now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, "Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall, that one of you shall betray me." It says, "As they did eat, huh. so he ate." Now you can't say, "Well, he ate the bread, the unleavened bread. He drank the wine, but he didn't eat the meat part." If you don't eat the meat part, if you go keep your Passover, you eat the bread, the bitter herbs, and the wine, but you don't eat the lamb, you're not keeping the Passover. So for him to fully keep the Passover, right? Because he was a, without sin, right? right? Unblemished. He ate of the land. He ate meat. So we always say to those vegan people, like, bro, what are you talking about? Or, Lord, eat meat. You have to eat meat because it's commanded. See, they don't know the Bible. They don't know the law, statutes, commandments. Yeah, it's yeah. commanded of us to eat meat on the pastor. See, so they, be li they be listening to a lot of times when you when you bump into somebody like that. They they, they don't listen. They listen. Like, they get that logic from some type of, like, um, Can be conscious. Yeah. Um, yeah, somewhere like that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you don't eat meat. Well, the first generation ancestors didn't eat meat. Like, bro, what is you talking about? Right, but now check this out. Document, ain't no documentation of that. Yeah, yeah, and that, now check this out, right? Because now that conscious shit movement, that shit is killed. That's just old. It's all about the Hebrew Israelites right now. Right. So the conscious community is struggling so much. Now they trying to take their bullshit consciousness and mix it with the Bible because everybody's focused on the Bible right now. But we told y'all dummies that from the beginning. We said, look, this is the number one book. This is the number one important thing in the world. The elites that run the world, they all know this book. That conscious shit that y'all talking about ain't shit. And now since that shit dying off, now they trying to recreate themselves in the form of, okay, now we're in the Bible too, but we're still coming with our conscious bullshit. And they don't really read the Bible. They just like fucking um, Islam. They don't even read their own book. Uh, it's based off of like scientific as um, knowledge and shit like that. Yeah, they, they just, they don't, just just like Islam don't really read. Most Islams, you, Muslims you run by, they, they never even read them, bro. They can't even quote the shit. You see how we're able to quote these precepts? And we can tell you and go to the stories and tell you what it's talking about? Most of them don't even know their own shit. You get in their own shit and say, look, this says it right here. 
And they say, oh, damn, I didn't know that. They told you the reverence to the prophets of the Bible in, in, in the Quran, but they don't even know that. Sure. So if it's going, if this book going to tell me a reverence to the prophets in the Bible, why don't I just go read the Bible and read the prophets' word in the Bible? Yeah. Verse 22, and they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? So that's the spirit you got to be in, man. But this brings us a new topic. Right. Some of the niggas that y'all eating the Passover with is going to be the same niggas that's going to betray y'all, man. Same way it happened to the Lord. So Judas was actually a disciple. And was actually there with the Lord. Walked with him, learned from him. Walked with him, learned from him, was there. He did works. But he betrayed the Lord. Yeah, because when, it, when a lot of, and that's, and that's the thing, of, you know, like when a lot of brothers is met with the oppressors head on, when a lot of brothers met with the oppressors head on and they give them an alternative, either this or, or death, you know, a lot of people are going to choose, you know, not death. And, right? and, then, and, and, and then niggas justify what he did works. The Judas did works. Right. Judas was in the truth. Judas learned. Judas followed the Lord. Wherever he went, yeah, he so was. so just because you got a dude coming down to your camp for five years, seven years, well he been down here, he been that don't mean shit. Sure. That don't mean shit. This is strong. Verse twenty three, and he answered and said, He that dipped his hand in with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Verse so, so the same motherfucker that's dipping his hand with you, that's. People that was going to betray you is the people closest to you. That's the whole point of being betrayed. Somebody that's not close to you can't betray you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It got to be somebody close to you that 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 you think it got your back or something like that. You're comfortable. That, exactly. That you're comfortable with, and then they betray you. Right? So you ain't gonna just let somebody betray you. So in order for somebody to betray you, that means that they tricked you. You didn't know. Verse 24. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Exactly. So, but the Lord, well, the Lord did know, but that's our Lord. He, he knows those things, right? Sure. But, um, but now, but, but that's twofold also because you're going to have men that's going to be not just betraying their own brother, that's going to be betraying the Lord. Take it to MOTV, that's betraying the Lord, man. And I mean, that's, shit, that's, that's 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 a. I mean, that's what we've done. I mean, out the out the history of the Bible, that's all us as a as a people did, and that's why we in the position that we in now. Yep. You and know we can't saying? really even be mad so at it's the, the Lord. It's, it. it's really the culture of the Israelites. Like we, like like who you think invented snitching? You know what yep. I'm saying? Because you had back in the slavery days, you said we was impressed, you know, by the white man, right? The white man would um come to his like something would happen. Right, and the only way he could get information was by, by the slave, by the people. Yep. Right, so if right. one brother did something that that they weren't supposed to do, this brother might fear the master more than this brother. He get the information from the one that feared him the most. Yeah, how how Nat, how Nat Turner get caught? That's it. They betrayed him. He had they had a young boy, I believe, but he was scared, and he and, and um, he pretty much told their whole plans. Yeah. and betrayed him, and that got Nat Turner. And, and, and that's modern day snitching. That's what that is. He, he snitched on Nat Turner that day. Yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? So it comes from from us. Yep. And I mean, then when you see, just look at your little rappers and shit. Look how they snitching and shit. That shit finna hit the Hebrew on the Israelite world here pretty soon. That snitching shit. Look how they be folding. They be the toughest niggas and they get, man, they get in front of Esau and they fold. So what you think these dudes gonna do, man? A lot of dudes that really ain't built like that, but they just in the truth. They come down to camp. They been doing it for years. But they really not solid. They really not built like that. They don't really have no real morals. If a nigga, uh, if a nigga that you've been cool with for five years come into camp, and then you have a fall out with somebody in the camp, and then you kicked out the camp, and he cut you off, and, and, and he let another grown man tell him don't talk to him no more, don't call him, cut him off. That means he ain't no real brother. He never was. He ain't no real nigga. Right. So. Yeah, I might be in my feelings because this nigga like betrayed me because I thought we was real friends and you cut me off just because I had a problem with some other dude. But it really ain't my problem. That's his character. So 
So really, he gonna betray the nigga that he cut me off for. He gonna end up betraying him too, because and that's what he do. He betrays me. Yeah. He not solid. Couldn't no nigga, man, bro. If I was at a camp, I'm fucking with you, and we fucking with each other outside of camp, and and you just see things different, but it really ain't nothing big. But you just see something different, and you go your way. You can't come down to camp. Can't no nigga tell me, hey, Kadash, stop messaging him. Y'all was kicking it. Y'all was cool. Y'all was calling each other, asking each other advice on shit. Stop talking to him and never message him again. I'll be like, man, bro, what the fuck is you talking about? Bro? Who is you, first off? And that's that problem with that leadership shit, man, because you become man worshippers. So bro. just because this man said it, you going to do it. But now you ain't even solid yourself. I ain't do nothing personally to you. Why we can't continue being cool? Ah, uh, because you're a part of this little group. That means that you're not a solid nigga. That means that you go with the group. Me, I, I stand on morals, man. That lets you know. That also lets you know too that the that the that the foundation of that group is real loose. Yep. And niggas not real brothers. Yep. So I already seen him betray me on some small shit, but I ain't the one that got to worry about it. If that's his character to do that, he gonna do that versus the little leader that he was following. Cause that's his character. When times get hard, he gonna follow. He gonna betray. Him. Cause that's in his character. It's either in your character or not. Um, verse twenty five. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Right, so Judas didn't even know who's going to be him, man. So niggas, niggas that think they going to be standing strong going to be betraying. They don't even know it, man. Just like um with um Gunna. Gunna rapping all that rap rap shit, all that shit with Young Thug and shit with the YSL case and everything. But he was always that way. So when, when the time came, he betrayed. He snitched because he was always that way. From the beginning, from his first song he made about that street tough shit they be talking about, he was all that was always him. It's either in you or not. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So, so, so a nigga that betrayed me, if, if if you can tell a nigga like don't fuck with Kadash, no, you and Kadash been talking, you and Kadash ain't have no personal problem, but don't talk to him no more because I'm mad at him. If, if a nigga can tell you that and you follow it, that means that you're not a real ass nigga, man. You're not you. Well, I, well, let's not even say real ass nigga, but let's say you. You ain't a real man, and, and you gonna betray. I mean, because really, if you if if you was a real um, brother, right? If the brotherhood was real, even with you, even if it's not between not those two, the then brother. then you would then you would try to see what you can do to make things better, right? You would try to find out what's going on because it's a brotherhood and we're stronger together. Yep. You know what I mean? So now now if if you can't figure out what what to do. And brothers go their own way. I'm still cool with you, bro. We still can talk. You ain't do nothing personally to me. You ain't do nothing just outrageous to that brother. Really, I didn't really, you didn't even really sin. You just called a brother a name, which ain't a sin to call a brother emotional. And you say you don't look at him as being a leader. Okay, bro, you don't look at things the way we look at things. That's cool. But, you know, we had a little personal, cool little relationship going outside of this. I know you ain't coming down to camp no more, Kadash, but we can still be cool. You see what I'm saying? That's a real, I, I respect that. You see what I'm saying? But they just want to cut you off because they not real. But I ain't worried about it. I'm happy that I seen it early. Because that, show, that shows that it's really not no real brother. You can be next to a nigga for 10 years on the highways and byways, and then you leave the camp and then he cut you off. He was never really a real brother. Uh, verse, two, uh, verse 26. And as they were eating, Yahweh Shai took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat this is my body. What's up, my brother? Verse 27. Verse 27. And it took, and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of my New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Look, look at the Edomites. They hate seeing us out here. And that's why we fucking out here. Period. So they can hate seeing us out here. Right? They finna hate what's finna happen to their ass. Well, right? They finna hate to see us back on top. Yep. That's what's really gonna kill them. Yep. How the fuck you gonna hate seeing us on a land that belongs to our people anyway? <laughs> Crazy. We, we ain't selling drugs, we ain't doing no crime. We just already teaching the Bible and they hate to see it. Crazy. So what the fuck can we do? Oh, it's okay, just kill each other and get locked up. Y'all can do that. Right. But don't do nothing positive. Like, Verse 29. 
But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Verse 31. Then said Yahweh unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Mm. So, man, the Lord did that, and he's going to do it again, and it happens over and over. He's going to do it with leaders. This whole really brother's captain. Because ain't nobody, the Lord is going to be our leader. He, yeah. he 